overdrive band. And we have some cars driving by. <laughs> What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today is a very exciting day as I will be installing the transmission into the 65 coupe. Um, along with that means that I'll be able to install the starter and eventually fire the engine for the first time. Now I am doing an AOD conversion which means I will have overdrive. Um, you can source one of those transmissions from an 87 to 93 Mustang. Um, they are not computer controlled. Um, you can also get them out of uh, some other vehicles as well, the E-Series or F-Series trucks. I actually got mine out of a 93 F-150. And with that is actually the strongest one of the production AODs with a two inch overdrive band. Um, when I was looking at doing this conversion, I originally thought I would piece together the parts I needed and kind of fabricate uh, the cross member and anything else I might need. Um, when I was piecing together those parts, I noticed that the price was getting up there fairly quickly and I decided to go with the kit that CJ Pony Parts provides, which does include almost everything you need, but not quite everything. Uh, so let me go ahead and take you through what that kit does include. All right, guys, so what we have here, we have the cross member, we have the transmission mount, we have the drive shaft yoke, um, we have the linkage for the carburetor for the kickdown cable, uh, the gear selector linkage, uh, bolts for the cross member, uh, the only thing not pictured that is included in the kits uh, would be the actual kick down cable. Unfortunately, that is on back order. Um, so they went ahead and shipped everything but that cable. And I guess I'll wait for that. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll be able to get everything installed. All right, and what is not included that you will need when doing the AOD conversion is a new flex plate and separator plate. So if you're running the original 289 like I am, you're gonna need a 28 ounce offset balance on it. If you're running an engine from 1980 and up, um, say a five liter 302 that the AOD came with, they use a 50 ounce um, offset weight. Um, and then also the bolt pattern for the torque converter is different than the original 289. Um, and then the amount of teeth is also different. So 164 tooth on this flex plate was what you need. Um, you're also gonna need a new separator plate. The bolt pattern for the starter is located in a little bit of a different area. Um, so these two pieces I needed to buy separately. They were not included in the kit. Uh, and it does make sense for them not to include it because it also depends on the engine that you're going to be running uh, as to which one of these you do need. And guys, the only modification I have to make to the transmission is gonna to be to the tail housing. Um, there is the provision for the Speedo gear. However, there is no hole for the speedometer. Um, that's because in the F-Series trucks, they use the wheel speed sensor. Uh, there's a couple different ways we could tackle this issue. Uh, we could source a new tail housing, or uh, we can drill the hole in the provision um, because I did remove the tail housing and the gear on the output shaft for the speedometer gear is there. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and drill out that hole, that provision um, for the speedometer gear. And then we have to drill and tap a hole for the retainer clip as well. So I'm gonna take you guys through that. It should be a simple process. Um, before we get started today, I did want to mention just a few things here. Uh, one being that I uh, finally have some merchandise available at my Teespring store. Uh, gear like this. Uh, we have some shirts, some tanks, uh, hoodie now for the colder weather. Uh, so plenty of stuff there if you want to go ahead and check it out and help support the channel. Alrighty guys, here is the transmission fully rebuilt and painted. I went with black just to match the engine block. Um, the only other thing that we're going to have to source separately is a pigtail um, for this connection here. This will do our reverse lights, also a neutral safety switch. Um, the factory harness on the 65 Mustang obviously won't connect to this, um, but I can get a pigtail. Uh, I found it on eBay actually to plug into that and then to plug to wire those wires into the factory 65 harness. All right, 
excellent guys you can see we do have our gear you can see we still have our gear here there's the provision for the speedo gear you can see on the inside it does not go through all the way so we're gonna go ahead and drill that through i got a 22 millimeter drill bit all right guys as you can see i got the hole drilled for our speedometer cable um, now i'm going to mark the hole for our retainer looks like i'm also going to have to flatten it out at the edge here because the casing is larger than what this cable was made for um, so i'll probably flatten out this tab Alrighty, guys and this is our final product as you can see we now have the hole for the speedometer gear uh, drilled and tapped for the retainer so now we can bolt this back up to the transmission and get the transmission in the car. Alrighty guys, went ahead and installed the cooling lines. Um, I went ahead and got these from classic2.com. They fit fairly well, just need a little bit of uh, a few more bends and some finesse uh, to get them to fit just right. Uh, looks like I will have to do some clearance for the dipstick tube for this line here. Looks like I will have some interference there, so I'll go ahead and get into installing that next and see what we'll have to do. All right guys, went ahead and got that dipstick installed. This is the one uh, that came with the AOD. Uh, just had to make a little bit of clearance with this coolant line, pushing it out a little bit so it can fit in. Use the bracket that came attached to the dipstick. As you can see, it's attached to one of the bell housing bolts right there. Uh, I had to bend the bracket just slightly um, so I could pull out the dipstick without interfering with the shock tower. As you can see right there, we have no interference with the shock tower and we're good to go. Alrighty guys, now that we have the linkage sorted on the transmission, I'm gonna go ahead and bolt in um, the gear selector. But before I do that, uh, I wanna go ahead and install all the sound deadening material um, so I can go ahead and install that gear shifter permanently.
Alrighty guys, we got the drop shaft installed. And that's gonna be a wrap for this AOD conversion. Uh, I do still have to put in the speedometer cable. Um, I'm actually waiting for uh, the proper gear to come in. And then the kick down cable is actually still on back order. So we are waiting on that. And I'll include the installation of that in a later video. Uh, I do wanna talk about the gear selector linkage here. I am probably gonna go and order something else. I do not like how this attaches to the lever here, uh, which is the set screw. It looks like it would be a point of failure for sure. Um, I do like this side, how it has the adjustable heim joint on there. And that's probably what I'll end up doing is welding one on this side and going to the hole that's already in uh, the gear selector lever there rather than relying on just a set screw. Uh, even with it torqued all the way down, it was still sliding up and down the lever. So I think I'm gonna try to modify this, make it work better, or possibly replace it with a different one. And guys, as far as the CJ Pony Parts AOD conversion kit, I probably would not buy it again. Like we earlier discussed, it doesn't include everything that you need. It doesn't come with the flex plate or separator plate, uh, which is specific for your engine and vehicle. So you would have to specify that prior to ordering if they included that in the kit. Um, like I showed you, I was not happy with how the gear selector linkage worked or really doesn't work. Um, so that's something I'll have to address. So yeah, guys, I'm just not overly impressed with it for the uh, amount it costs. It was around $550. Uh, really doesn't give you any instructions at all either. Um, no instructions were included in it. So yeah, I would not buy that kit again. I would definitely piece together what I personally like to use for the future. Alrighty guys, that's gonna be a wrap for today's video. Uh, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you like what you saw or want to see more on the 65 Coupe or any other projects I have coming up in the future, be sure and subscribe, like, and share as well.